Hey guys, this is Thorn, welcome back. In this episode we are going to look at commands, the very basics of commands, what are they and how you can use them. So first of all, what are commands? So commands allow us to give or uh, create instructions in game, basically think of it as changing the situation or environment around you in a way that you specify. So in by default in creative version of Minecraft or in survival, you're limited by the default game mechanics that you have around you. But, by default inside Minecraft, we have the ability to use commands. Now, commands are regarded as cheats, um, or a way to overwrite the game environment, and it can allow you to do many different things using a finite number of commands. So first of all, let's look at an example of a command. So if, I've, if I want to make the weather stormy right now, I can put in a command to change the weather to be stormy, and then, there we go, we've got some lightning happening right now. So we can now run another command to make it nice and clear and sunny. And yeah, it's a very simple way to overwrite the environment around you. First of all, how do you get the command window? Okay, so there's a couple of ways to do that. One is you can use your chat command button. So this is on the PC edition of Minecraft where you can press your tilde key and you can now type in a message. Or if you put in a forward slash and then type in an instruction, you can now use that as a command. Okay, there's another way to bring up that window for a command, and that is you use your command key or your slash key. There's a slash key by default. If I press that key, I can now type in a command. Now, these buttons may be different for you, so to view what buttons you have defined for your game, you can go to Escape into Options, then go into Controls, then scroll down to Multiplayer Settings. This is in the 1.7 version of Minecraft, so these settings might move in the position in future updates. Then you can see here I've got open chat uh, defined by this grave or tilde command and then in the open command button is my slash key. So that's how I can bring up these windows. Next, what are commands? What are the different types of commands we have inside the game? Now you can view the, all the commands available just pressing your command key which is my slash key by default and then you press tab. Now tab is a very powerful button inside the world of commands because Tab allows us to auto-fill or auto-complete instructions. So here, game mode, game mode that is selected here is the very first command that is available inside this listing. And this listing here is all the available commands we have. And game mode is the very first one. So that's why it's defaulted to game mode. So by pressing the tab key, it's allowing me to populate the first command. And it also auto-completes. So if I start to type in game, then I press in the tab key, I've now got two different options available. I've got game mode and game rule. So you press tab again and it'll rotate between the different options. So it makes it a lot faster to navigate around the different commands and to find the different commands available. Now, if a command has arguments or parameters defined for them, what that means is followed by the command, you need to provide another instruction. So for example, let's look at game mode. If I just press the enter or return key on that command, it's going to say in red, I've got to specify the instruction or the command in this syntax. So it's expecting a mode and then a player after that to change the game mode. Okay, so how do we do that? Let's try this. So let's go game mode, mode. Now what other modes of options available? What you can do is you can press the type key again. There we go. Now it's going to give me the different options available for this particular command. So it's telling me I've got a choice of survival, creative and adventure. So again, you can press the tab key again and that will auto rotate between the different options. So let's change it to survival. And if I press space again, I can press tab. And that's also going to pre-populate with my name because I'm in single player. I'm the only player online. So there we go. Your game mode has now been updated. So I'm now in survival. Uh, for myself on this world, and yeah, that in command was successful. You can generally tell when a command is successful because the message that you will see will be in white, and when it's not successful or there's a problem, it's usually in red. It's not always the case, but that's generally how you understand which commands are working for you and which ones aren't. Now, depending on whether or not you're in single player or multiplayer, you might have different commands available to you. And you can always find the available commands, just remember by pressing your slash key or your command key, then pressing your tab key, and that will tell you all the available commands. Now, I have all commands here available. Um, this is in single player. 
but you may not have all these options available. So what drives those options? One way is the allow cheat setting for the player. Now the way you can see that is when you create a new world, so let's get out of this world and create a new world, create a new world, and we're going to go into more world options, and there's a button here that says allow cheats on or off. Now what that means is that allows us to use all the commands or only the very basic commands which can't influence your environment or your situation anyway. So if I go allow cheats off, which is the default for survival, and I create this world, and now we're inside our world here, we're just going to press our command key again, which is my slash key, and then press tab, and that's going to pre-populate all the available commands I have available to me. As you can see, I've only got a very small subset of commands, and the reason for that is that we have that allow commands option set to off when we created this world. Now there is a way to enable that option in pre-existing worlds, uh, but for all the survival players out there, I won't show you how to do that, just so you don't resist temptation and start cheating in your world and giving you an advantage in your survival situation. Now a good thing to remember when you're using commands is always type with case sensitivity. What I mean by that is if a command is written in lowercase, for example if we bring up the commands again and we can see uh, the give command, you can tell it's written in lowercase. Now I suggest you always type with case sensitivity. It doesn't always mean that you have to, uh, but there are various commands and the various arguments they require that are case sensitive. So for simplistic reasons, I suggest you always type with case sensitivity. So if something's written in lowercase, you use lowercase and vice versa for uppercase. So that's a good tip to use when you're using commands. Now when you're using commands, you're going to realize pretty soon that there are going to be some arguments or inputs that are required and some that aren't and there's some that require custom values and some that don't. And the way you can tell that is by looking at the way the input or the example provided for the command is written. So for example, if we bring up the list of commands again, and let's say we want to look at the give command. So let's just type give and press enter. Here's the syntax. It's saying in uh, the, the arrow braces, I want the player, then an item, then in square brackets, amount, data, and data tag. So I'll just bring the chat option up so we can see those options again. So what the arrow brackets mean is these are required inputs. So I must provide a player and an item, and then the square brackets are optional. Uh, so I either can provide an, uh, an amount or a data or a data tag value, um, but I don't have to. Now, if I do want to provide a data value, so that middle option there, which is in between amount and data tag, I have to provide the amount first. So the command needs to understand which input I'm providing. So think of it as if you need to provide something that's not quite to the end, you have to provide all the inputs leading up to that particular uh, input in your example. So for example, if I wanted the data to be provided with this command, I'd also have to provide the player, the item, and the amount. So because the amount data and data tag values or the inputs are in the square brackets, I don't have to provide those, so I can just provide myself with just using the player and the item inputs, and that's enough for this command. So let's use an example here. So I'm just going to type in give, then the player. So I'm just going to type in my name. Now I'll just press the tab key on, on my name, and it will autocomplete uh, my name. Now I want to put in the item. So currently I'm in the 1.7 version of Minecraft. I'm currently in 1.7.9 and I can type in just a number or an ID for the item. So here I'm giving myself a block, which is a command block, and I can place this, there we go, just by using that command. So I gave myself a command block, and then I placed it. Now inside the help here, you can see that there's a little uh, piece of text here in gray, which says using numeric IDs will not be supported in the future. So we have to start using the name of blocks. So let's see how that works by jumping into Minecraft 1.8. Okay, now we're in Minecraft 1.8, the latest snapshot, and we can take a look at our version here by just pressing F3. You can see that I'm currently in snapshot 14W11B, and that is a 1.8 snapshot. Now if I want to use that give command again, so let's just type it in again. So give, then Storm Frenzy for my name, I press tab to autocomplete, and if I put in the number or the ID 137, you will see that there is no such item with name 137. So I can no longer use 
the IDs, I have to use names. Now this is a good thing. And one of the reasons is this is a, this will allow us to use names of things in different resource packs differently to vanilla. And it also helps with searching for IDs in game or names of things in game. And here's an example. So here I just want to give myself a command block. So let's type in give again and press tab on our name to give my name there. And I want to start by typing in Minecraft with a colon. Now if I press the tab key, this is going to tell me all the different options I have available. Now you've got to remember this can auto-complete name. So if I don't know the proper name for the command block, but a fair guess is that it has something to do with command, if I now press tab, you can see that it's pre-populated with underscore block. There we go. So I've just given myself a command block. Now you don't have to actually when you're using um, block IDs or names now, uh, you don't have to have this Minecraft prefix. If I remove this part here of my command, and just say give storm frenzy command underscore block, that will give myself a command block. But I think for simplistic reasons, keep using Minecraft colon then the name, uh, just so that helps with distinguishing between accessing the vanilla blocks and things in resource packs will also help with the pre-populate of the search. For example, because if I typed in give, then my name again, and if I just typed command and pressed tab, you can see it's not auto-completing. It's because the game doesn't know which resource I'm actually after. But as soon as I type in Minecraft colon, then command and press tab, you can see that it's pre-populated with the name. So that's a pretty cool way to use uh, the block names in the new versions of Minecraft. So something else you'll have to do a fair bit when you're using commands is to be able to define a player or entity in your command. So what that is, is if I wanted to, for example, run a command and apply it to just this horse or just this squid that's out there or maybe just to a particular player, there's different ways to do that. And let's look at some examples here. So if I were to use the give command again and look at the syntax for this command, the first input you can see there is player. Now I can define the player just by typing in my name and pressing tab to autocomplete. But what I can also type in here is at symbol then P, which means the nearest player, at symbol then A, which is all players, at symbol then R, which is a random player, which is mainly useful for multiplayer maps when there's more than one player online, and at symbol then E, which is for an entity. So what I could do is, for example, we'll say at symbol P, which is the nearest player, and I'm going to give myself a golden sword. So there we go. I just gave myself a golden sword and it matched on me because I am the nearest player. Now, what I could do is use some arguments on these inputs. So for example, for this target, which is the nearest player, if I were to have uh, square brackets around that, uh, just next to it rather. So here I've got at symbol P, then square bracket. Inside here I can provide a whole bunch of arguments which are comma separated. So I could say within a radius of five blocks and perhaps I wanted that person to also have a minimum experience level of five. There we go. That player cannot be found. So why not? Let's just check what experience level I have. Let's go to game mode zero. And I've got an experience level of four. So if I were to change this input of this give command to now say minimum experience level has to be four, it's now found me because I have experience level of four, which is equal to the minimum. And now that search criteria has matched on myself. So there's a whole bunch of different arguments you can provide in your commands. I won't list them all in this video because there's just far too many. But I will put a link in the video description where you can read about what these arguments are and what they mean. And then it will also provide some examples on how to use them. So here I'm using, I have to be within a radius of five blocks and I have to have a minimum experience level of four. And you can do this kind of syntax for narrowing down the, the inputs for your target uh, and a whole range of commands. So that's a very useful way to limit the search criteria or the criteria in general for your commands. So we've really only just scratched the surface of commands and how we can use them in the game. And to show you just one example of how we can make the commands a little bit more complex, a bit more custom, here's an example of where 
let's just paste in the command I've typed earlier. And that is, I'm going to give the nearest player a golden axe. Here I'm giving it a damage level of 15. And it's got an enchantment level here, which is sharpness. And it's giving it sharpness 10. So here if I hover over this uh, golden axe here, you can see it's got sharpness 10. So that's one example where you can start to see how you can take these commands and start to use a bit more uh, advanced syntax to make them really specialized and customized for the purpose that you, you have in mind. So let's look at some other examples. So I've just created this little test pad here and what I'm going to do is detect when a player goes inside this little square here, I'm going to teleport the player to this other uh, pad just next to it. So let's just try that out. Let's just jump in here. Whoop, I've been teleported. Okay, let's just walk in, see if we can sneak in. No, ah, no, it's teleported again. Let's try and jump in. No, nope, teleported. <laughs> okay, so the way I'm teleporting this player is by using a command block, which is always being executed. That's why I've got this very simple clock design here and this command block is continuously being activated. And what this command block does is that it's executing this command all the time. So this, this is exactly the same as me taking this command and running it from my uh, command input box here. So if I run it, there was no result because I was not inside this square. But if I disable this clock and I step in here, I don't get teleported. But if I run the command, I am teleported. So all the command block does is runs the command uh, whenever it receives a redstone signal. So here it's receiving a signal all the time. So this command is being executed over and over and over again. And what happens is when I've got a comparator compacted to this command block is when this result is successful. So, so if it's successful or if the command itself returns uh, a number, uh, the strength of this comparator will output either the, the result, either it's a one for a success or up to 16 for if it's a variable uh, response that you get or the output you get from the command. So that's why when I step in here, you can see this redstone lamp turn on briefly. There we go because the result of the command that was executed was successful. So the main reason why we use command blocks, or uh, well one of the reasons we use, use command blocks, is that we can link up the redstone to be automatic. For example, here I've got it activated by a clock. You could have pressure plates. You could have different things to activate when the command block should be executing the command that you have inside here. And you can also uh, interpret the output of the command by using a comparator. So that's a very powerful way to use commands. It also, a command block also gets over another limitation which is how long the command can be inside your chat window. So for example if I keep typing characters here I eventually get to a character limit and I can't type anymore but it's very possible that you'll have commands that go much longer than that and the command input uh, text length is far greater inside a command block than it is inside your chat window. Uh, something else to note is in your command block you don't have to prefix your commands with the forward slash, you can just have the commands st written straight like that. Um, so here you can see I was teleported fine, um, but if you're copying and pasting outside of command blocks to your chat window and vice versa you might just want to leave in that forward slash so it makes it easier to do so. So let's take a quick look at the command here. So what we have here is we're saying if there's any player that gets inside this location, so I'm saying x is equal to this value, y is equal to this value, z is equal to this value, and the distance from these coordinates, if I'm four blocks away from here, so if I'm at minus 260 and I'm, for example, I'm allowing the player to be up to minus 254, which is four blocks uh, away from uh, this block here, and vice versa for the uh, Y and Z. Um, that means basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying at this location, whoops, <laughs> let's just break this. At this location here, the player can be four blocks this way, it can be four blocks this way, or four blocks above me. If I'm anywhere inside this cube, then that search criteria will be resulting with a match. So any player that's within that search criteria I'm using the teleport command to put them to a very specific location. So here's the X, Y, and Z. And I'm also defining the uh, direction the player should be facing. So the direction 
here and here, which is defined. When you hit the F3, you can see the direction that the player is facing. And that is, see that facing, and I see it's at minus 61.3 and 26.7 at the moment. That's what those two values are. And that is new as of Minecraft 1.8. So that's a basic overview of commands and command blocks in Minecraft. Hopefully you found it useful. There will be a couple of links in the video description for some more reading material on commands and command blocks. So I suggest you have a read of those if you want some more information or information on how to use the various target identifiers, selectors, arguments, all that fun stuff that I very quickly touched on in this video. I will be putting also a link in the video description for a playlist where I'll be posting some examples of Minecraft commands, so hopefully you find those useful. So happy fun times with your Minecraft commands. Use them wisely and sensibly. And until next time, guys, stay awesome. All right, thanks, guys. Cheers.